I'm really excited to chat with all of these projects. It's really cool having uh, representatives from different corners of the Giveth Galaxy uh, here and, and sharing a little bit about their projects. I know it's been a, a challenging bait around, but still a great opportunity to learn about each other and identify those, those synergies that would allow us to collab beyond this round. And you never know, the, ga the gas might take a dip and might allow for some, some last minute uh, donations to come through. So I'm really excited to learn about everyone. And, and I just want to set some, set some ground rules for the space. We're going to have five minutes uh, per project. Uh, I know that's that's a short time because you're all doing marvelous things, but we're going to try to set it to five minutes just to be respectful of everyone else's time. I know everyone has a lot of stuff to do, a lot of impact to make in the real world. So we're going to uh, jump right into it and get started with uh, Lunco. Lunco, do you want to share a little bit about what's going on? Tell us about your, <clears throat> your plans and uh, what you hope to do with the funding from the project. Uh, is it okay if I'll be in uh, to Jumbotron the link? To give, so I, I pinned, well, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. My name is Rod. I'm uh, behind uh, Lunko PFP. Uh, Lunko is an open source uh, platform for industrial and robotics engineering focused on knowledge sharing. Right now, uh, we have a prototype. Uh, it's on Gitcoin. You can go there and download it. Um, it's like a core and uh, with uh, the help of uh, Gitcoin funding and actually with the help of Every funding uh, will build, will continue building a system. And one of the first things that that would be actually helpful for for engineers is the possibility to um, exchange models directly, like two engineers, one, for example, I don't know, in Asia, another one in the US, opens Lunka, and one just drag and drops a uh, latest cut uh, design, and then Lunka transforms and send the data to, to another engineer and they can work together like they can review rotate uh, leave comments and even do engineering or uh, simple tests together like maybe run two robots together and uh, check how, how how to prevent collisions that's uh, the first step and uh, hopefully it will be released in three from three to six months and the next step is to build uh, other applications on top of the platform like uh, all the types of applications needed to successfully run the project, like requirements management, model based systems engineering, application applications. Oh, and under application, I mean basically tool that built on top of the Lunka core. Uh, yeah, so hopefully with time, uh, it'll have like it'll, uh, uh, it'll be a possible to implement everything needed for engineering, including CAD, CAM, CAI software uh, tools for uh, infinite element analysis and a lot of uh, other things in the world. Uh, my name, uh, yeah, uh, I'm a space systems engineer by trade. I'm a mathematician and computer scientist. But five years ago, I became a professional space engineer. I was responsible for design of the walking rover uh, Asagoma, the first walking rover for lunar exploration. It has had to fly on the first uh, uh, mission of an American company, Astrobotic on a peregrine mission, and unfortunately we're not able to deliver it in time, so it will fly on the next mission. But I've designed uh, a small device that was well, integrated to peregrine, so uh, like, um, I'm the guy who knows, who, who actually can uh, send your payload to the moon, I know all the processes. And uh, with that experience, and with all my uh, engineering experience uh, in software, uh, I think I found a quite decent problem. Uh, a, way, a collaboration because most of the time with Astrobotic, with Astrobotics engineer, we spent on sending back and forth emails with models, and at some point in time we had like tons of different versions of models, and it was like really a hell. And decentralized technologies uh, could provide a really nice and convenient way to uh, synchronize the data, but also on top of that, using open source technologies, I believe, uh, with the, all the modern, ex with the, all the existing technologies like ChatGPT, we can create a really decent alternative to highly expensive commercial software like uh, SolidWorks, uh, Thermal Desktop, um, Adobe Fusion, uh, MasterCam, and other software that 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 like everyone who works uh, with the hardware knows. And yeah, uh, um, that's the project about hardware. So if you work with hardware or if you have friends who work with hardware, please 
uh, share with them Lunka. Most probably they will like the project. Uh, really thankful to Gitcoin that we were able to get in touch with a couple of hardware projects and uh, one of the projects said hey guys like can I download Lunker like right here today because I need it like right now and I think that's the most encouraging that you can hear and also I want to remind that uh, the gas fees are really huge but after all if you donate uh, the same amount of money with the with the uh, you know in, including gas just directly on give us it would be really decent and it will really help I think that's all uh, what I wanted to say, share right now. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm happy to answer on uh, all the questions. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm really excited about uh, one day traveling to the moon with you. I hope uh, I hope I can afford it. <laughs> uh, rent, so do I, man. <laughs> rent on Earth is pretty high, so let's see let's see what we can do about that. Well, thanks so much. So let's let's uh, let's stay with this same theme and go hop over to Frontier Dow. Oh hey hi hey thanks Carlos hey everybody you got really great projects in the audience here with yours Web three beats and then got Solar um, Foundation and blockchain women in blockchain and just all kinds of great projects here and of course give it thank you so much give it for hosting this for us this is the final push as you noted so this is this is Paige with um, Frontier Dow and. Um, you know, uh, I would love to, as much as I would love to talk about um, moon and space exploration, because that's really, a, the, it's foundational to our DAO. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to uh, switch and, and actually talk about our, our grant for this round, for the beta round of, um, of Gitcoin. And that's uh, Women in STEM. And uh, we chose this thing for a lot of reasons. One, because we, we have this book project that's been ongoing since uh, its genesis last fall. Um, and that's basically to um, give women, it, it, it's a book, so quite, you know, low, low, low tech, <laughs> but uh, to give women who are in these fields of uh, regenerative finance, so refi, decentralized science, so DSI, uh, decentralized finance, DeFi and regenerative science, excuse me, regenerative science, uh, ReSci, to give them um, a bit of a, a platform and, and a showcase um, for them to talk about what they're doing, um, the leadership roles that they're playing in these fields, because most of them are quite nascent. And also um, a quick reference guide for people who are um, organizing conferences or maybe looking for speakers or um, maybe a, a media person who needs a quick quote, that they'll have a very easy and readily available uh, guide where they can just, you know, drop them and go, okay, this person is an expert in this field. You know, let's, excuse me, let, let's reach out to them. Um, this is by no means, this is just edition one, so it's by no means a definitive guide. It's going to be an open document um, constantly being contributed to and added to as the field grows. Excuse me, there's a lot of dust in the, there's a lot of pollen in the air. So <laughs> I have a bit of a dry throat. Um, so yeah, so that, that's our project. And it's also actually, um, it does throw back because this is of course the Artemis generation. And Artemis um, is the term that, the, that NASA and now over 30, 35, I think now signatories, I believe Poland was one of the more recent signatories. Um, to the Artemis Accords, which is what the program, the mission program is called for returning um, people, you know, people to the moon, but, but, you know, the first woman and the first person of color is, is has been named in that, um, that initial mission. And in fact, um, that was announced, the crew was just announced a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, including one Canadian actually too. So, um, so yeah, so I think uh, any kind of discussion about science or, or space exploration or any of that these days without acknowledging and recognizing women's role in these, um, in these fields and their contributions to it is um, probably a little bit, um, it's maybe, I shall I say, a little bit negligent. So, um, so yeah, so thank you so much for letting me um, have this soapbox and I'm just, it's, it's extraordinary always to be able to participate in this community, such a collaborative, such a supportive community, really love it. Um, you know, we've had, we've had a little bit of a hiccup, I think the last couple um, days with, with these gas, with these gas fees, but you know what, 
you know, we come for the grants, but we stay for the community. So, so all said and done, this is always a great experience. So thank, thank you so much. Well said, Paige. I really appreciate you finishing with that community call to action. I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for all the teams to find ways to, to connect with each other. And I'm really, every round, I'm really excited to see the, the connections that happen and, and the ways teams are collaborating. Sometimes are, they're collaborating across different uh, rounds. So that's also interesting to see. And we're going to go ahead and take it, uh, continue somewhat with the space, go, go from the moon and the space down to the Solar Foundation, bringing that ray of light and energizing the world. So I believe that's John behind, behind the Solar Foundation. If you can take it away and share a little bit about your project. Yeah, GMGM GM to, to you, Carlos, and to, um, to the Giveth uh, team and, and to all my, my friends on stage and in the audience. Um, uh, super excited to be here this morning and talk a little bit about the Solar Foundation. Um, haven't had as much time this round to, to shill my own project as I've been uh, working pretty hard to, to make sure everything keeps moving along uh, for everybody else. But um, the Solar Foundation uh, is a project that uh, myself and a, and a colleague of mine, uh, Colleen, uh, started towards the end of last year. Um, it really started initially out of uh, the idea that we'd seen uh, one of our other grantees, uh, Ioweka Uganda. I uh, haven't looked to see if they're, I don't think they're in the space today, but um, I believe they are on Giveth. Um, but Ioweka Uganda had had a grant in the climate round for the past several uh, grant rounds. And they had always noted sort of as a footnote, like we would love to get some solar for, you know, for, our office and for what we're doing, it would be, you know, it would be a huge help. And, and so we saw this need and, and thought, what if we spun up this, this grant and, and started this foundation, honestly, with the initial intent to, can we raise some money and fund a solar project for Iowa, Uganda? They need to be focused on spending the money that they receive from the grant funding on all the important work they do day in and day out in agroforestry and supporting their community and so instead of them trying to, at some point, pull money away from that to get, get some electricity, we thought, okay, we're going to form this foundation. We'll see where it goes. So that's really was sort of the origins of, of where we started. And we had a very successful GR15 um, and raised enough money to, um, to do an initial project with Iowa, Uganda, and we are uh, working on a second project with them. Um, out of that, we decided, okay, I think we're going to, you know, be make this foundation into a, a more of a, a real entity. And so we, um, we formed a, a donor advised fund uh, for the solar foundation. And so we, that allows us to provide some tax efficiencies so, to some of our larger donors. And then um, both uh, the uh, spark, which is one of my, my other projects uh, as well as um uh, spark seeded a little bit of money into the uh into the project as sort of a founding member and then we also have a, a connection to gary v and v friends and they uh contribute were one of their nonprofit sponsors and so they contributed a significant donation at the end of last year to the project as well to really seed a, a treasury for us and so uh out of you know, our previous Gitcoin round and then all of the money received towards the end of last year, uh, we've we've really taken off running and, and tried to uh, begin to fund some projects and, and start the work that we want to be doing. So, as I said, we, we worked with Iowa, but then we also worked with uh, Helper Social uh, Development, who's in the audience. Uh, they're an amazing organization that is uh, building and funding uh, schools around Nigeria uh, to to uh, to teach and educate the the communities they work in and so uh one of the schools or i believe it's their first school that they built uh didn't have any consistent electricity and so we recently uh helped them to install some solar there as well as to purchase a few computers to set up a small computer lab uh at their uh, school uh we also uh formed a partnership with a project called the footprint project uh they're more of a web 2 centric project but they focus on building mobile solar generators more for disaster relief um than anything else but then they they also get used sort of all the time but are available for disasters and they were doing some work in puerto rico and so we helped to fund the equipment for a, a workshop they did there a couple months ago 
to build uh, three of these mobile solar generators there, both for future disaster relief uh, on the island, but also then they're, they're actually going to sit at uh, different fire stations within the community so that the the uh, local fire stations have some consistent power uh, should they need it uh, at any time. Um, and so those have been some of our uh, early deployments of, of solar, uh, but we're really starting to look at what's the the next evolution of our work. Um, you know, I, I, the core of what we want to do is fund solar, so we will continue to do that. But we also see that there's a lot of issues in the nonprofit and NGO world, particularly around, uh, you know, fundraising. Uh, m- most nonprofits are spending 80 to 90 percent of their time fundraising and 10 percent of their time doing the great work that they uh, want to be doing in the world. And we believe that uh, Web3 may provide some tools to really begin to um, make, you know, I guess provide more efficiency within treasuries and, and ways to begin to create some like flywheel effects with the funds that nonprofits do raise. So a couple of the things that we're, we're looking at, um, we are doing some staking of some ETH to, to receive a little bit of a yield on portion of our treasury, um, knowing that that's one way we can sort of use a web three tool to at least have a, a consistent yield on our, our treasury so that, uh, it's not just sitting stagnant. And then, um, we're looking a lot at impact certificates and hyper certificates uh, as a maybe a way to move towards more retroactive funding of some of the work that we do. Um, and we think that if we can start to put together a model there for, for our specific work, that that may be a model that can be shared with other nonprofits as well as a way to uh, go out, do the work that, that any organization is looking to do anyways, and then, uh, you know, generate an impact certificate that's showing all of the, the sort of hard impact and soft impacts of that work, whether it's, you know, in our case, uh, looking at the electricity generated and, and the, the actual impact of that solar from a, from a providing electricity standpoint, but also what are the soft impacts that are harder to, to quantify, such as, you know, the fact that children can read at night or the fact that they have a computer lab now and can, can begin to, to learn new skills in that way. Um, you know, there's just so many sort of ancillary impacts that, that come with providing power to a community. And so can we begin to, to catalog and capture that impact all into sort of an impact certificate that we can sell to impact investors who want to be uh, investing in this sort of work? So we're, we're thinking a lot about that and, and, um, and going to be piloting some of that with, with some of the projects we've built to date and, and working with both the HyperCerts team and we're also talking with another uh, – org called sprout up who's uh, going to be doing some impact certificates so i want to do some experiments with that and see how that goes um i'm haven't been watching the time carlos tell me if i'm if i'm about the end of my five you let me know <laughs> i love i love that you're being conscious of that so yeah yeah we are at five minutes i really appreciate you you know i really love that you're making so much impact all over the world right from latam to africa and a lot of those projects that you mentioned are also uh, really small projects that that do need the extra boost in you know like in creating their the growing their network in the space, but also just uh, it's so hard to come up with with the funds to do that on your own, right? To create like your own solar solutions, and I, I really love your points about uh, creating other opportunities because yeah, fundraising for a nonprofit is very difficult, and I think it's it's a great time to be in the Web three space and experiment with things like hyper certs to potentially create an, another stream of income. So thank you so much for, for touching on those points. I think that between the rounds, we should make a point to really uh, double down on those narratives because, you know, it's, it's the same concept that I, I keep preaching. It's, you know, teach someone to fish instead of giving someone a fish. And I think that's something that I am taking to heart personally, because it's something that Web3 Beach needs to really develop. So speaking on global impact, I want to go over to another organization that is doing exactly that. We've seen ReFiDAO pop up everywhere. Uh, and the only question I have is when ReFiDAO Antarctica? <laughs> Let us know a little yeah. bit about what you going on. <laughs> hi, Carlos. And hi, uh, Almond. Anna here from Refidao. Well, you know what? I lived in Estonia for some time at minus 25. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of that. But um, 
Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Um, um, we are very excited because this round has been very interesting. Uh, besides having our own grant, uh, which is Refida, we are, we are in the Web3 community and education round. We also had a, a featured round with a lot of local nodes, which is very uh, exciting. So what we are doing very shortly at ReFiDAO right now, we are fostering the creation of local nodes around the globe that will regenerate Earth, but rooted in the needs of local communities, because we had this idea that regeneration cannot be really done top down. So we had this amazing chance of being connected with a lot of founders through the work that we've done during the past year and basically a lot of refidao local nodes have emerged and have applied for the local node prize so local nodes are basically funded by a minimum of three founders and what they are doing are they are they submitted an idea on how they can regenerate their local communities regenerate earth regenerate um yeah, the, their reality basically based on the needs of local communities. Because sometimes, um, this is from my personal perspective, we talk about regeneration, but it's not a solution fit all, the fits all. So something beautiful that we have seen, we have now uh, refined our local notes, they're a part of this round and they all have a different idea of what regeneration means for them. So we are learning together with them because we want also the, the local nodes to be connected in a network that, that, that can help each other regenerate their, their reality, their, their local context, and maybe learn from each other. So the idea is not to have a lot of separate nodes. The idea is to have a network of nodes that will co-create regeneration, basically. So right now we have our grant on the Web3 and Education, Web3 Community and Education Round. And we are basically uh, fundraising right now to be able to support the local nodes in what they do. We have an amazing team that try to support them with the knowledge that we gathered. We try to support them with promotion, with marketing, with fundraising, with all these things that they might need to kickstart their activity as a local node. And yeah, it's, it's a very exciting time. And uh, we have seen also the coordination events happening where uh, the local nodes gathered their local communities and they tried to onboard them on, on Gitcoin and open their passports and help them understand how this whole Gitcoin game works. Um, unfortunately, well, the gas was a little bit high, but uh, I think it was a beautiful experiment of activation, of local activation. And from my perspective, I cannot wait to see more um, activation stations may be made by Gitcoin. That would be also something very interesting. And I will actually pin our grant on top of this space. And I think I said everything. I don't know if anyone has any questions. I was very quick. <laughs> but yeah, I'm here to answer whatever. <clears throat> Thank you so much for sharing. I am so excited to see the widespread network effect of ReFiDAO creating uh, just impact and raising awareness around the world. I've been in contact with uh, the, the node in uh, Suriname and I'm you know, exploring ways we can maybe support with some cleanups. And I, I'm just really excited. I, I've tried to scale Web3 Beach to Venezuela and uh, Colombia. And I know that's a lot of hard work, uh, even just with communications and keeping in touch with everyone. And then actually like, Doing things in real life just makes things so much more complicated. So I've got a lot of respect for y'all doing all of that. And I'm, yeah, really excited to see what comes from all of that. So now we're going to stick with the theme of global impact. And we're going to go with Glow Dollar. That's doing a lot of interesting things. I, I always uh, see the ads on the Green Pill podcast. So I'd love to have you share a little bit more about what you're doing. Awesome. Thanks so much uh, for having us. And great to hear that you're seeing those uh, ads pop up. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Harm. I'm one of the co-founders and CTO uh, of Glow. And um, if you don't know, Glow is a nonprofit that is creating the Glow dollar, um, which is an ethical stablecoin that lifts people out of extreme poverty. Basically, with your DAO or with your savings, you can help end extreme poverty simply by holding the Glow dollar. 
Um, and that generates uh, a basic income for people in extreme poverty automatically and no cost. So um, how that works is you buy the Glow Dollar and that gives us um, real dollars or actual US state back dollars that uh, appear in our bank account that we can invest in um, uh, government bonds like T-bills. And then all the profit that we make off of doing that, we donate again to another charity called Give Directly, who have been running basic income programs for people in extreme poverty for uh, many years now. And you as an individual in the process have not lost a, a penny in doing so. Um, so that's a, an awesome new uh, sort of methods to generate um, funding for, um, yeah, for foundations and other nonprofits. And we're really focusing on extreme poverty for a number of reasons. So we believe that extreme poverty is a core part of what's currently wrong with the world and a large meta crisis. Like 700 million people continue to live in extreme poverty, uh, despite it being the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal uh, number 1.1, um, which is no extreme poverty by 2030. And the World Bank has actually uh, a year ago or something said, well, we're not on track to succeed in that mission. Uh, we're not doing as much as we should be in order to fulfill that goal which is kind of odd because there's already a, a really good and clear intervention to resolve this, which is simply giving people the cash in a wire transfer. And that's exactly what Give Directly is doing. Uh, and that sort of got us thinking as a foundation, okay, how can we help them succeed in their mission and end extreme poverty? Um, right now, they have uh, the capacity to um, uh, deliver basic incomes to 20 times the amount of people that they are currently delivering it to. Um, and yeah, that's a real shame. Now, we also realized in June 2020, when the interest rate environment changed, that um, the running a stablecoin is now a really profitable business. So um, because the interest rate has uh, uh, gone up so much and because um, um, well, there is so much stable coins in circulation out there. Uh, companies like Tether are making 4% on all of their holdings. So that means that they're making, well, they're on track to make at least 2 billion in, in profits this year, which is quite a lot for uh, what we believe is essentially a core utility to the crypto ecosystem and should be more of a public good uh, rather than a pure for-profit enterprise. Um, so we're working to uh, uh, really create an alternative stablecoin whose profits don't go to a small group of share stakeholders, but rather to those who, uh, who need it most. Um, and that's super exciting. Um, we're currently seeing well, quite some traction, not only among crypto people, but also really among non-crypto people. Like um, lots of people who have never had much of an interest in crypto before will now say things like, finally, a great use case for crypto, or this is literally the best thing I've ever heard. Um, and we're super excited about that. And we're looking forward to sort of onboarding uh, those people onto the crypto ecosystem as well. Um, yeah, and then in terms of what we'll be spending the money raised in the Gitcoin round to is actually uh, one of the projects we're currently working on is a crypto wallet for those non-crypto people where they can really sort of live their glow life uh, inside of their world and it's super easy to get started. Um, campaigns to grow what we call the number of early adopters. So that's people who are excited about what we're doing and want to spread our message and signal boost what we're doing. If you're interested in that, you can do that too by going to uh, glowdollar.org slash early. That's G-L-O dollar.org slash early uh, and, and sort of join the movement. And then most importantly, Importantly, uh, we're also working on increasing the availability of the Glow Dollar on different exchanges and in different jurisdictions. We're making epic progress towards, well, getting on the first of those, uh, which I hope will be uh, completely done by June. Uh, but afterwards, we're also looking to expand rapidly and become available in all the exchanges you love and know. Um, yeah, I think that about sums it up. Any uh, questions? 
Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing about that. I'm really excited about this. I'm, I'm a big fan of stable coins as the widest adopted use case for crypto, like uh, Web, Web3 Beach, you know, that's what we mostly use is, is well, that's all we use is stable coins for these micro payments in Latin America. And I think that's uh, such a such an underrated use case. And I'm really excited that you're doing something so meaningful and impactful with that. And I just wanted to add that the, the GLOW contracts have been audited by Certic and they are also deployed on Polygon. So in case you're worried about the gas fees right now, <laughs> make sure that you can also get it on Polygon. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Let's jump over to Umberto from Urbanica, who's a huge supporter of Giveth. Uh, Web3 Beach has actually received donations on Giveth uh, from Umberto. So thank you so much for that. Umberto, tell us a little bit more about what you've got going on. GM, GM, yes, I'm a big fan of Give It. Always, uh, even talking in Gitcoin season about Give It. <laughs> well, this is this is a um, cross pollination, right? We we have to make all the platforms um, to to provide value in, in a strategic way, so that when there is no Gitcoin season, is Give It season, and when there is no Give It season, is Gitcoin season, and well, uh, it's it's a fun game. Uh, thank you very much and very, very happy to be listening to all these projects which I love and which I have supported. And really, really, all of you are making a huge difference uh, in in my life, at least, and in the world in many places. And also, uh, I am aiming to see you um, massively adopted and to see you on mainstream uh, talks. Like, uh, I think when when we reach the common uh, discussions in everyday life in a dinner table that is not about crypto, but that is about um, activism, doing something, uh, improve, improving our community. And when we hear the Solar Foundation, when we hear about uh, a, a lunar uh, simulation from LUNCO, if we hear about a, a hub that is uh, gathering change makers in, in a city uh, through Refi DAO that we hear about uh, a, a type of uh, currency that supports others uh, in, in poverty like low dollar and so on. Um, I think that's when we have won and we need to reach that. And that's what Urbanica is trying to do. Urbanica is trying to replace the current narratives the current ways of thinking and perceiving life into from this neoliberal capitalistic one that we have by default because we have been taught uh, that from since we were children to now from all the media that we consume. Uh, we need to change it into post-capitalistic. This means like the things that the, 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 the system, the economic, uh, cultural, politic ecosystem uh, system, sorry, that uh, goes after capitalism so that we learn from the lessons of capitalism and um, improve it because there is no way, there is no tech, not even combining all the techs that we have, uh, all the technologies that we have, we're going to go, uh, we're going to thrive uh, uh, this, uh, we're going to go out of this crisis we are living. We need to change our mindset and for changing our mindset, we need to start understanding that certain concepts that we think they are truth, they are not. Like profit, like there is this, this uh, article that Grist, uh, Grist uh, ORG uh, released a few days ago. And, and it talks that all the big industries that are making profit, they are making profit because they are not paying for the ecological services they are extracting value from. And this is, this is something we need to realize. Um, we need to look into satisfying our needs instead of looking to accumulating stuff. Like, uh, like the, first, the, the, the best way to explain this is when you have you enter a house that is full of things, and how have you felt when you entered this house? Like heavy energy, overwhelmed, that something wasn't right there. And it's the same when accumulating without a purpose. 
So we need to change that. We need to change the way business are made, the, the way uh, government is organized. Because also government exists because we don't have the skill and the knowledge to self-manage ourselves. Like, have you gone to a town that is far away from the city? They do not have a municipality leader there and they organize. And the things that happen there are better organized than the things that happen in the city. And this is because they are able to self-manage. They don't need somebody to tell them what to do. And this is what we teach. We teach peer governance. We teach activism. Uh, we teach the, how to use blockchain technologies to enable any activist uh, that could be a, a political leader or a urban leader or a entrepreneur uh, to gather in, in a group and do not need to depend from any third party, uh, big party, let's say like the government or, or the markets, but from the people that really follow that cause, follow the, that purpose. And well, that's what we teach, we teach. And now we want to take our online courses that are free for everyone to take into in real life so that we reach 40 cities in of 20 Latin American countries so that we can make this knowledge into um, workshops. I know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm finishing my part, so that's it. Um, I hope you can support us. We are about five to six people short to reach the, one of the top, uh, the leaderboard of the climate solutions. And if we reach this top, we are going to be able to, to fund this traveling school, which is the first one in the world, the first post-capitalist traveling school. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can DM me. Thank you so much, Humberto. All right, I want to pitch something to everyone in the crowd right now. We all move to the moon. Lunco provides that service for us. We set up our energy grids through Solar Foundation. We have Frontier Dow, grow all of our food. And then we have Urbanica provide us transportation to and from these different communities that we're building with Refi Dow. How does that sound to y'all? And Glow Dollar is the currency that we're using. Perfect, I love that. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's jump over to Women in Blockchain Farsi. I'm really excited about this. Uh, it's, it just shows how diverse the community is, the Web3 space, but specifically the, the Gitcoin and the Giveth communities. And I'm really excited to learn about, about uh, the mission that you've got and what you hope to do with the funding from the beta round and the Giveth uh, contributions. Hello, Ruan. And thanks to the Giveth team for giving us the chance to be here and introduce ourselves today. Uh, three years ago, a group of seven women from all around the globe uh, discovered a scholarship uh, opportunity for Farsi speaking women to join the Consensus Academy's smart contract development course. Uh, this incredible initiative organized by the founder of Coin Iran Bahar and Women in Blockchain's founder, Tessie Mehrain, aimed to teach the fundamental of smart contracts development. Uh, we are proud to say that all of uh, all seven of us successfully graduated from the program. Uh, we felt how our world view has changed since uh, we learned what this technology enabled us to do. Uh, later in the same year, our group formed uh, Women in Blockchain Farsi, aimed to educate Farsi speakers on uh, all aspects of the blockchain technology and uh, smart contract development. A year later, we also participated in the first security and bootcamp on smart contract security and auditing and graduated in the top 10 persons. I'm Aisha, uh, one, of, uh, one of the core members of the Women in Blockchain Farsi and uh, proud to be representing this group today. Uh, our, team, uh, our team has a history of success overcoming challenge. In the summer of uh, 2021, we taught uh, 35 students through online classes. And our YouTube course, Solidity Development in Farsi, has received over 35,000 views. 
Additionally, our forum hosts more than 4,000 Farsi speaking developers actively engaging in uh, technical discussion. Uh, and this year, our main project is an online course focused uh, on educating the Farsi speaking community about blockchain technology, Solidity programming, DeFi, and more. Uh, we are really excited to announce that this course, uh, part of the Web3 Community and Education Round, uh, will take place uh, during the summer of uh, 2023 and lasts for uh, three months. Um, in our upcoming uh, online course, uh, we will dive into various topics such as uh, uh, blockchain basic, uh, including its history and potential impact on various industries. And Ethereum network, uh, its architecture uh, and consensus mechanism. Proof of stake and staking and their role, uh, role in um, uh, securing and decentralizing the Ethereum network. Also, uh, Solidity programming, covering the basic latest updates uh, and new decentralized tools. Uh, DeFi, its application and how it empowers individuals and communities. Uh, security and uh, Solidity best practice and auditing. Uh, in order to make the course accessible and inclusive, all materials will be in Farsi and publicly available. We will publish the course content on YouTube and our dedicated forum, allowing for widespread access and community engagement. Um, our project's goal is to encourage the local community to grow, uh, particularly among uh, women in Middle East, and for them to overcome governmental restrictions and social barriers. We are uh, really hoping to have more than 1,000 students for this summer. Uh, I know it's a big goal, but uh, we are confident that with the support of the community, we are uh, able to do this. Uh, to wrap up, uh, we warmly invite you to support the One in Blockchain Farsi project as uh, we work um, to educate and empower the Farsi speaking community through blockchain technology and DeFi. Uh, together, we can build a brighter future for everyone. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Women, life, freedom. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to send all of this information to my good friend, Sahar. She's, uh, she's trying to navigate her way into Web3, and I, I think maybe having it in Farsi might be uh, a good way to propel her through, through the space. So I really appreciate what you're doing, and I'm a big fan of creating content in native languages just because, you know, there's that, that extra seasoning in there you know, that gets, gets people a little more, uh, a little closer to the, to the terminology that we're trying to use. So now I th think we're going to go with black hair. Oh, sorry. I had punk domains yeah, on first. Punk right. domains, please take it away and let us know about what you've got going on. It's five minutes. I'm going to be waving my hand at you directly when you're approaching the five minutes. All right. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much for uh, yeah being part of such an amazing group of projects. It was really nice listening to what you guys are doing. Uh, Punk Domains might be a bit different because we're a project that is part of the open source uh, software currently at the Gitcoin round. And what we try to do is we try to have an open source uh, protocol that allows any DAO, nonprofit, or NFT community to create their own usernames or IDs on the blockchain. Uh, we've been now a bit over a year old uh, organization that developed out of a side project that my colleague started and yeah, Gitcoin actually allow us to, you know, focus full time now on this on this project and being in Web3 full time. Uh, but what we actually do is um, you probably all are aware of ENS domains like .eth names. This is something that was uh, that is very popular and we, of course, love them. But our vision for the future was that not everybody will have .eth name. Uh, but they will have different names because you want to represent the community that you're a part of. Uh, so, for example, Giveth is also one of our partners who has their own domain protocol through Punk Domains. So you want to tell the world that this address that belongs to me, for example, Tecker.Giveth, because I am a part of this community. Um, 
Punk Domains overall is open uh, source. So anybody, any project, uh, even many projects that are they're here with us today, uh, you can come to us. Uh, we can help you set up your own Web3 name protocol, uh, which means that you can offer your community or your users to create their own names. They can mint it as an NFT. Uh, you can also do a public funding smart contract here. So when anybody mints the domain, the 80% or maybe 100% of the mint fees will go back to to you or it will go to some cause or some public fund that uh, you uh, that you encourage. Um, uh, we are multi-network protocol, which means that uh, as we can see here now with Ethereum and the current Gitcoin round and the gas fees, uh, we are multi-network. So we can launch a Web3 name protocol and actually any popular network that is currently out there. Um, and you can check out yeah, our website for more info and, of course, our, our, our Gitcoin uh, round. And I think one of the, the, one of the earlier speakers also mentioned that, yeah, we appreciate the donation also, of course, on Giveth because the, the, the gas fees are lower. You can find us under Giveth Names. This is our project that is currently on Giveth. Um, and yeah, for any questions or anything like that, yeah, feel free to DM me. I am Tecker, part of the Punk Domains. Yeah, happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much about, for sharing about Punk Domains. Mm -hmm. um, I think, hold on, I have to mute your mic. There we go. Thank you for sharing about Punk Domains. I think Web3 Identity is such an important use case uh, that's going to get more and more popular. and. Uh, ENS kind of has a the monopoly on that, but I think that's going to be growing in other directions pretty soon. So uh, let's go ahead and jump over to Black Hair and learn about that project. Hi, hi, guys. Uh, thanks for opportunity. And uh, I very happy to see so, so much great projects. And um, my name is Nastya. I uh, founder for the Black Hair and... Uh, we a small team, three people, and we create uh, content about science and uh, web three lore. This content it's uh, scientific articles about cognitive biases and uh, it's sci-fi story about web three lore. And uh, our um, big project is uh, this is game in web three lore, and uh, we have prototype in september we are planning uh, final release and uh, we plan um, we have plan update our game in serial format every month uh, we um, have um, uh, we have uh, so much uh, finished assets uh, music and uh, all things and um, uh, I want to say thanks community Gitcoin because it um, is a place uh, for big opportunity for meet people who can help you with uh, very complicated things, uh, uh, for example, fund fundraising and uh, help the guys. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, I'm so tired and uh, my English so bad and uh, <laughs> I want to say thanks. There is absolutely nothing to apologize. I know we're all we're all running on fumes right now towards the end of, of the beta round. And uh, definitely a, an accent is nothing to apologize for. It just makes this space more beautiful. I, I'm a big fan of listening to different accents. I'm going to Portugal tomorrow, and I'm so excited to listen to, to Portuguese accent. And uh, I think we have... Uh, helpers, Helper Social has been waiting, so please take it away. We have five minutes to learn about your project. Yeah, hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Okeke Chidi. I'm the chairman and co-founder of Helpers Health Foundation. The Helpers Foundation was founded in 20, started in 2016 between I and my wife, a school teacher, with the aim to eradicate the problem that facing our people from moving, moving forward. Uh, based on the problem, we observe that when you go to some public school, you find out some people that are unfortunate, and when they are coming to school, they are coming with empty handed. When other children are learning, they are just staying there and watching out. So some of them have no textbooks, shoes, dirty clothes, and so on. So we started by helping them. 
by providing those basic needs they needed to learn, you know, to progress. So, and uh, in 2019, we incorporated organization as a non-profit organization. Since then, people from all walks of life have been supporting us. Through their support, we were able to accomplish a lot of uh, projects, such as building of safety facilities in schools that open 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 education, and the, uh, this open education have affected a lot of ch children, both uh, moving out of school, both teachers staying away from school during during school hour. So uh, because they have a the conduct is it like diarrhea and some other things. So when we visit any school to identify some challenge in the school, we have find out those problem. Uh, because it's our mission, we find make sure that we uh, construct those facilities. Today, the the school we have intervened have been the enrollment rate have increased, and uh, the children are learning free. The, the school learner is in a conducive environment. And apart from that, we have uh, distributed free school supplies in public schools, which aim to ensure that no child drop at school because of uh, 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 financial challenge in their parents' side. Because most of the uh, poverty is not by caused by parents, they poor by children. It's because of the situation they find at home, but they have interest in going to school, but because of what take them back to because of challenge, financial challenge their parents have. So our goal is to ensure that every child have access to education. So, and uh, based on our vision and uh, the condition of public schools in Nigeria, we, because we want to see a, a, a school environment that conducive so that children can learn and progress in society. So because of that, we funded and uh, the, the, the number of enrollment rate in school, about 20 million children out of school in Nigeria, we, we established a school that offers free education to out of school children. The school now is currently running. We are happy to the help we have received on your platform, which is give it and other new, numerous uh, support. Without them, our school will not be uh, moving forward today. We're also grateful for the support we have received from the, uh, the, uh, the Solar Foundation, which provide us with a solar system that enables that enable us to teach our school and also empower our computers. So these are what we have been doing. And uh, our goal now is to, in give it, uh, Gitcoin now is to raise funds for classroom building and school supply, providing your school supply for our ongoing effort. So we, we believe building of this uh, classroom block is one of the initiatives that can help our school to sustain because Retina apartments can lead us, can make us to close our initiative because when you don't have money to renew your apartment, the owner of the property will inject you out. So building a school now will, will have us, we will, will sustain our initiative, continue move up, moving up for years. Because when we build a high school, we also use the facility to in, teach other people, children, other skills they need to learn, not just people, children in our school, but other, the entire community. So we are raising this fund now to start the construction, which we started. We have started the process already. We're just raising funds to start the construction. So we appeal to anyone with interest of what you are doing at heart to donate a token. Even if you had $1, we make a difference. We help also build, buy uh, building materials, others uh, necessary when they, they, uh, our people needed to stay in school. So we appreciate every one of you who have donated us in the past who have also, even the, in this on, ongoing project, that every donation you send to uh, the uh, helper fund, 100 percent of you, of it will go to the child, the the charity work we meant to, because we are entrepreneurs. All that our management team, all of them, do not depend on the fund we receive. We all have our own businesses we are doing. We just our goal is with helper foundations to eradicate the issues we identify our community so that. Our, we, our committee will, be, will become free. Because when when the children are not educated, which means the future of our generation will be in, in a mess. So we want you to join us and support us any way you can. Thank you for everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, uh, ask us. Go to our this thing. We will see our donation link and support us. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Helpers was one of the projects that was included in my first batch of donations this round. So I'm really excited to see what you're doing. Um, I'm really happy to hear about the, 
the collab that's going on with Solar Foundation. And that's really important work because these kids are our future. And I'm really excited to, to see what comes out of that. I, I recently found a TikTok page called uh, Africa Lit. And it's so cool. There's kids learning how to code Python. I mean, like elementary or middle school kids. I was so excited to see that. So, of course, I gave them a follow because I want to see see what they're building in the future. Uh, let's wrap it up with Agroforest. Agroforest Dow, please join us and tell us about what you what you've got, got built, what you're building. Hello, hello, Carlos and everyone. Thanks for hosting this space. Well, we are we are building tools to allow anyone to go toward agricultural areas, and we have a pilot now going with an area in Brazil, and anyone can join. There's an NFT uh, when you you can buy and join a, a token gated group with the local stewards where where we talk what we're doing we uh, share reports we we think we design the next uh, cultivation we are now in the in autumn going to winter so we, we are already thinking of spring what we're gonna do in spring how many banana trees how many plants and species we are adding to the place and those that have the NFT, they are uh, rewarded with a percentage of the harvest, 5% of the harvest, and we'll be, uh, we will have a discount for the, for the uh, spring cultivation. So this is just a, a pilot to test some, some tools for, for coordination. And, and, well, we we are also on, on the Gitcoin grants. We're looking for collaboration and and also partnership in in tooling. Those that devs that are like this this uh, um, purpose and would like to be part of it, please get in contact. And there's a lot to be built. Some we can think of reputation systems, digital identities. And, you know, just trying to build new supply chains, regenerative supply chains, intergenerational and transparent and co-owned. That's what we are trying to do. If you like coffee, you know, you should own the coffee production. You shouldn't be buying coffee in a supermarket every week. Just have your coffee at your doorstep, you know, because you own the production pretty much. That's it, Carlos, in short. Thank you so much. I have my coffee right here and I wish it was from one of your coffee farms. I really appreciate you sharing about the work that you're doing in Brazil. And uh, I think we have one second. We have one more project uh, coming up. Oh no, Lunko, I think, I believe you had a question. You had your hand up. For yeah, but I think that Lunko is not here anymore, but Ooh, well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'd like to wrap this up by inviting everyone, first of all, some calls to action, yeah? Let's get everyone following each other. It's just really nice to have everyone be aware of what, what project is uh, creating impact in between the rounds. I think we do a really good job of promoting each other uh, during these, these rounds, but I, would, I love keeping up with everything that happens in between the rounds. Uh, we don't have so much time to report the, the real impact during these last two weeks. So please make sure you're following each other. And then the other invite is to join the Giveth Discord. There's a lot of uh, conversations happening in the, in the Discord. Uh, I think Giveth is a perfect example, just like Gitcoin, of, of organizations that build in public and have these conversations, uh, have important conversations out in the open and anyone from the community is welcome to join. So we'll be pinning that uh, to the to the jumbotron, as everyone likes to call it, and make sure to jump in there and get involved, be active in the community. I I really like uh, going into all of these calls because that's where the real alpha is. Uh, thank you all for joining, and have a great day. <laughs>